George? George! Did you just write me a note? Dear Nora, do you know how to FaceTime? I know how to do a lot of things, actually, George. Didn't end up with a thousand acres in a hedge fund by sticking to the missionary position, did I? <laughs> now go on. Go and milk the pigs. <laughs> Hello, gentle viewers. I've decided to nip into the conservatory today. Here we are to read a few of your fascinating emails. And there's been quite a lot of them. I've got another communication from Nancy. This time, Nancy has come up with her own recipe for homemade toothpaste. <laughs> but Hazel's written in. Again, I think you're getting a little bit obsessed with me, Hazel McDoodle. Her email's here. Can you see it? Dear Nurse Nora, as a beginner cyclist, I wonder, do you have any tips on chafing? I do, actually. Hazel, you see, normally what I would recommend is you just spit on it. But in these unprecedented times, it isn't nice going around gauzing on things, is it? So instead, I recommend a goose grease poultice. It can cure many things. Why don't we give it a try at home, viewers? All you need is an ordinary goose. Squish the goose gently to extract grease. Smear the grease onto a cabbage leaf. Apply cabbage leaf to the affected areas. And of course I can hear you cry, but what if I'm a vegetarian? <laughs> That's all right. If you're a vegetarian, you can substitute the goose grease for a can of WD-40. Oh, 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 what's that? Oh, look at that! It's Fanny from the pharmacy, coming through on my tablet. <laughs> How appropriate. Hello, Nurse Nora. Are you there? Hello, Fanny. Oh, I have to say, you're looking alive and vital. <laughs> Isn't it your birthday today, Fanny? Oh, thank you. Yes, it's my birthday today. 18 years old. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you can't wait to have your first taste of scrumpy, Fanny. <laughs> is the matter, you poor girl? <laughs> Fanny Cobbler. She's got a reputation with all of the boys. It's not her fault. You see, she has no idea how pretty and beautiful she is. <laughs> I know how she feels. I mean, come on. It can't be that bad. It'll all just blow up. Today's troubles are just tomorrow's forgotten. <laughs> oh, just snap out of it, you deaf little cow. What happened at the pharmacy, Fanny? I've been sacked from the pharmacy. All I was doing was trying to make some extra money down at the village square. And I saw your two farmhand boys, you know, George and Aubrey. And and those two muscly boys as well. The two that live by the lake in that caravan of yours. Get on with it, love. Oh, sorry, Nurse Nora, sorry. Um, they said they'd give me a five-pound note every time I did a cartwheel. Well, that's not a very clever thing to do, is it? I was only there a few minutes and I made <gasps> 70 quid. Don't you do a silly thing like that ever again, Fanny. Do you hear me? Those boys aren't interested in cartwheels. They just want to see your knickers. I know, Nurse Nora. That's why I took them off. What happened at the pharmacy, Fanny? I don't want to tell you. I, I feel silly. I'm a nurse and a farmer, Fanny. You can't shock me. I was left on my own in the shop when Mr. Drongul went out for a pasty. I got bored, so... I drank some medicine and dropped a few tablets. I wanted to see what it was like. <laughs> I started at one end of the stockroom and I'd just about done everything. Oh, I was slugging and popping and sipping and dropping. Oh, it was fun at first, but when Mr. Drongul came back from the pasty shop 
About an hour later, I was off my tits. Language, Fanny. Oh, sorry, Nurse Nora. Sorry. He found me doing a show in the pharmacy window. I was twirling a surgical stocking round the head and doing the splits. And I whistled. Look, do you want me to talk to Mr. Dromgold for you? Get you your job back? He's gone out of business. I totally cleaned him out. Why don't you come and work for me here at Blue Acres? I'm not sure. Well, you could look after the little lambs and pick flowers. I've not picked flowers before. The farm is quite a long way from my cottage. The other side of the village. You could stay here, Fanny. In fact, there's a spare bed in one of the caravans. You know, the ones with the muscle in... I'll be over in ten. I'll just pack a bag. <sighs> Don't forget your knickers. <clears throat> now, I'm going to dash in a minute, but before I do, Nancy's recipe idea. This is a corker, and you really don't want to miss it. <laughs> this time, Nancy has written in with a suggestion for homemade rhubarb toothpaste. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. What she suggests is you take a stick of rhubarb and you rub it on your teeth. Well, ta very much. I'm sure we're all dying to try that, but there's a little bit more to the letter too. Because Nancy asked if I'd send her some rhubarb because she hasn't got any. No, Nancy. I remember the years before rhubarb. What I used to do, Nancy, and I recommend you do this yourself, is get yourself a stick of celery and embarrass it. <laughs> Bye for now. <laughs> Yeah.